Hello, and welcome to the Bamboo Lab Podcast with your host, Peak Performance Coach, Brian Bosley. Are you stuck on the hamster wheel of life, spinning and spinning, but not really moving forward? Are you ready to jump off and soar? Are you finally ready to sculpt your life? If so, you've landed in the right place. This podcast is created and broadcast just for you. All of you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. If you'd like to learn more about Brian and the Bamboo Lab, feel free to reach out to explore your true peak level at www.bamboolab3.com. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Bamboo Lab podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley. And today we have a really, really amazing guest on here. I know I say that every episode, but there's a special reason why I, I, I'm excited to, to uh, speak with Brooke today, and we'll introduce her in just a moment. But before we do, I want to share the latest analytics. Today is January 26th of 2023, and as of 15 minutes ago, we are now being subscribed to and followed avidly on six continents, 43 countries, all 50 states, and now we are in 1,153 cities across this beautiful globe of ours. So thank you all for your support and your sharing with others. And before we get started, please make sure as you go through and hear Brooke's story and her wisdom, please share that, smash that like button, rate us, review us, give us a good rating or a bad rating, whatever you feel. And please, by all means, share this episode with three people you love, because I know they're going to find value because I, I've only spoken with Brooke twice in my life. But because I read her book in the last two days, I have gotten so much value. I'm going to share with that in just a minute here. All right. I want to read a quick uh, heart letter we received, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday. It was regarding the episode we did last week that was aired on Monday with Chuck Wackendorfer. And this letter came in, said, uh, regarding the Chuck episode, he said, he said, he made a comment in your podcast that said, I regret my divorce, even though I'm happier now. Then the Bamboo Pack member went on to say, that line hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm not sure if I'm actually happier yet, but I know I've grown in ways that I never would have. So Bamboo Pack member, thank you for sending that out. We just love to see and hear how the episodes and the guests and how they're changing your lives and making you think at a little higher level. All right, without further ado, I'm going to introduce an amazing lady from my old hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan. We have Brooke Crable on the phone on the phone today, and I'm going to read her bio. Her bio is so extensive. I'm going to cut it down, but because we're going to cover so much of this in today's episode. But as a self-proclaimed personal development junkie, Brooke's true passion is seeing success through others. With a consistent track record as a top producer in a real estate firm since 2010, along with her bulletproof mindset and over a decade of hiring personal coaches herself, Brooke now pours her knowledge and experience into others through the power of coaching. Her coaching program, which started in one real estate office with just a few agents in 21, has quickly expanded and grown to a company-wide opportunity for all agents within the brokerage, which I believe consists of 45 offices in Michigan and Indiana. Over 80 realtors have already gone through her program, and due to the tremendous success they've achieved, the program is rapidly growing and expanding. It's, it's, it's just bursting right now. As a certified John C. Maxwell coach, trainer, and speaker, Brooke also really enjoys pouring into management teams on the topic of leadership. She is the mother of two amazing children, and a really important aspect is she is an incredible writer. I don't even know if she knows how good she is, because when I told her how good she is, she seemed a little surprised, but she's a damn good writer. I had the opportunity over the last two days to start and finish her book, which is called Uncaged, Break Free by Changing Your Inner Voice. And I was just <clears throat> sharing with her before we started recording today, every single page has highlights for me. I have dog tags on the sides of the, of the corners of the pages. I've got uh, drawings. I've got highlights and, and uh, underlines and underscores. So that means the book really hit me, and this one really did. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to include a link to her book, an Amazon link, along with the text of this podcast today. And also, I'll share this a couple of times, that I will be giving away 10 free copies of the first 10 people uh, who reach out to me by a heart letter and share with me what this episode has meant to them. All right, without further ado, Brooke Crable, welcome to the Bamboo Lab podcast. Hi, thank you. And Wow, you made me sound really <laughs> impressive. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, 
I didn't make you sound impressive. I just shared. Thank you. Thank you. All I did was share with you the facts, Brooke, and share with the Bamboo Pack the facts. And I'm going to talk about this book. I'm going to promote this book because I, and I got to share everyone out there. I've already bought a copy for my daughter. It's on its way. And for a friend in East Grand Rapids, it's on their way to her as well. So um, this is a book. When I read a book and buy two copies within 24 hours after finishing it, that means this book made, meant something to me. So it hit me. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome, Brooke. Well, I'm glad to have you on finally. I know we tried a couple of weeks ago, and due to my being stranded in Marquette, Michigan with a snowstorm, we had to reschedule. So thank you for your flexibility. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's a good thing I hadn't read this book yet. I would have been afraid to have to, uh, after reading and how you're strict on your time and you don't waste people's time, I thought, I'm glad I didn't know that before I had to reschedule. <laughs> <laughs> I might not have been able to pull it off. I do honor my time and people's time, but I also do find myself to be flexible as well. So I'm not rigid. We can, we can always make changes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, good. So, you know, by reading your book, I feel, feel I've gotten to know a lot more about you. But for those out there in the bamboo pack, can you please start out and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your childhood, uh, maybe who or what were some good inspirations for you growing up? Yeah, definitely. You know, I I find myself as just a very normal girl from West Michigan. Um, I am one of four kids, grew up with amazing parents, an extremely loving home. Um, I'm the oldest daughter. And, you know, I grew up with over 50 first cousins. My dad is one of 10. My mom was one of nine. And so family was just everything growing up. It still is to me to this day. And, um, you know, I don't have really a story about my background or, or anything that would be you know, a devastating story or anything like that. I think people probably look at my life and say, yeah, I, she had it pretty good. And I did. Um, surrounded with love all the time. Never had to worry about not having a roof over my head. Never had to worry about much at all. And um, yeah, that, I think that's my story. You know, I'm just surrounded by people and love all the time. And then when you were 13 and you had your bangs... <laughs> you, I love that. Where, and you know, and I can I, I hope I can share this. And people in the book know. And Brooke's a very open uh, book for herself. She's very, very transparent, and shows a lot of her vulnerability in the book. And she talks about when she was in, I think it was thirteen years old, and was voted airhead in her biggest airhead in her class. And I think, do they still have those kind of awards in school today? <laughs> They do. they do. I know some schools. Yes. And, you know, my daughter is a senior right now and she was, you know, voted on the mock elections as well. And I thought, my gosh, I cannot believe they're still doing that. But I know it's fun and it's lighthearted and it's really meant to be. Um, but yeah, we can absolutely talk about that. So when I was 12, my family moved us from, you know, living in Grand Rapids. We moved out to a small town and um, I went there in seventh grade and eighth grade, the mock elections come. And I think, you know, this is fun. And I'm voted class airhead. Now, you know, my sister is like extremely smart and to this day, my very best friend. And the four of us kids are quite, you know, we're very close. We're quite competitive. And I was a cheerleader and I may have come across as an airhead sometimes, I'm sure. And, but it really hit me hard. In fact, I was mad when I was voted to be class airhead. I was really insulted. And at the same time, I guess I thought that's how people perceive me. So maybe that's who I am. And it really started this thinking for me of, I'm not very smart. And I look back and I mean, even all four years in high school, senior year, voted class airhead again. And that had really kind of just started to transform my inner thinking and how I thought of myself. 
And in turn, I'm sure I acted as if, because that was my thought. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of look back and, and look at all the ways that I sabotage anything I did with the thinking that I wasn't good enough or smart enough to be able to do something. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you always wanted to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? My name is Rich Summers, and I have a new podcast where I help people build wealth through real estate investing. I recently had on guest Tarek El Moussa from HGTV Flip or Flop, and I also do a lot of fun educational episodes teaching you how to invest in real estate. So if you're looking for a new real estate podcast that's fun and free-flowing, be sure to give it a listen. My podcast is called The Rich Summers Report. That's spelled S-O-M-E-R-S. Again, that's The Rich Summers Report, and you can find us on Apple, Spotify, and all major platforms. Hope to see you there. It's so amazing how, and I, and I talk a lot about this in the podcast, Brooke, and I do this with my clients as well. I, I believe that we are all born what I call pure. We're all born as a, we're at our peak when we are born. We have no biases. We have no, we're uncaged. Let's call it that. And yeah. over the course of time through culture and family and, and friends and media, now with social media, in our own inner demons that we face, our own impure thoughts or not so our negative thoughts, we kind of put on this, what I call, we carry around a fake ID. And it's just like, you know, 19 year old kids do in college, they carry around a fake ID. We, most of us still carry an ID around that's not it's completely false. And we have to spend time as adults now kind of breaking away and chipping away at all that false stuff so we can get back to that, what I call your true peak identity, that highest level self. And just be, by getting that 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 uh, that award, so to speak, in the mock elections, and your as a twelve year old, and again as a senior, it just is, it was just another couple layers put on you that really hid who you are. And I think we could actually probably say people who are considered airheads. I think a better word are just dreamers. I am sure I definitely had my head in the clouds. <laughs> I think people would probably still think that about me because I am a dreamer, you know, and. Uh, definitely. I, I would agree with you. And I fully agree about, you know, the way we speak to ourselves and that we are born pure. I agree with that fully. And we are just allowing so many things in at our young age that we're actually, you know, taking those thoughts in and our perception of those thoughts or what thoughts we choose to believe is really how we see ourselves. And, you know, we will talk to ourselves worse than what, than what we would say to our worst enemies. And it's so important that we acknowledge when we're speaking negatively to ourselves, because All it's doing is affecting what you're doing in the outside and how the outside world is responding. You know, I have often said our outside world is really just a reflection of what our inner thoughts are. I 100% agree. I really like that a lot in the book. You mentioned that several times in the book, how you at times you spoke to yourself like you would never speak to your worst enemy. Yeah, And I think we all do that so oftentimes. And I, I know so many people in the bamboo pack, especially those who are going through a challenging time right now, you're probably, you out there are probably saying some things that are just feeding the fire of your despair. You're adding on extra layers of fake ID. And it's so important to talk, to really stop and say, what is my inner voice telling me? And what I'd say that with that inner voice, would I allow that inner voice to say that to somebody I love? That's right. I mean, you know, I love in the book, everyone in the pack out there is at the end of each chapter, uh, Brooke does a really cool job of asking two questions. Um, there in one is a victim question regarding the subject of that type of that chapter. And one is a Victor question. So just to give you an example in the book, when she talked about uh, getting the, um, airhead award, she said, the question that keeps the lioness tame, which is a victim question would be, you would ask yourself, why am I such an airhead? And why can't I concentrate like everyone else? Or the question that would set that lioness free and uncage her, is the victor question, which would be, what differences do I have that can be utilized as my strengths? It's just another really powerful element of this book is that each chapter, you ask yourself these two questions, and then she has some some homework after after that as well. But that was a really powerful question right there, I thought, pertaining to that. 
Yeah, I think it's really easy for us to make ourselves victims by simply just asking the why, right? Why me? Why can't I have that? Why is everybody else talented and I'm not? Why, 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 why? Instead, you know, when you turn that question around, you say, how Mm. or what? How can I turn this around? Or what do I need to do? And how, how can this, you know, really get me away from being a victim? I love that. Well, we're getting into the meat of this already. So I want to go back. I do want to ask you a question because I think people will be curious of this person you are today, really, you know, mastering this inner voice conversation that you have and, you know, reaching out to your clients, doing the coaching work and then writing this amazing book. Who was an influence for you growing up? You know, that is really, really crazy that you're asking that because when I think about my influencers, I mean, there are so many and for my, I mean, my sister is incredible. Of course, when we were young, we fought all the time. I look at her now and I think, my gosh, if I had her strength, you know, as a young person, She's just amazing. She liked um, to do homework. She did. <laughs> she actually is like one of those really smart people that would I would want to go out and party when we were in college. And she would be like, uh, yeah, no, I have a test tomorrow. I'm not doing that. And I'm like, well, will you pick me up then? And she was like, no, <laughs> you know, this is before Uber. And, you know, I mean, she, but, and we, we would fight. And of course we were like the sisters, but we could scream and yell at each other. But. At the end of the day, nobody else could say anything about either one of us because we had each other's back through the whole thing. I have two brothers. They were great. So growing up with siblings really was an influence, right? I mean, I knew how to um, have conflict and I knew how to love deeply. My parents were incredible. And, you know, I will say on my mom's side, my mom was one of eight girls and incredibly beautiful, strong, talented women who are also just as kind and humble. And having these women in my life was very influential. Um, You know, it's so funny. I'll even post something like on social media and they're still the first ones to comment and compliment. And they're just so uplifting. So what I'll say about that, though, is we always kind of joked that my grandma, who, by the way, is in her 90s and still around and doing Um, extremely well, we always joked that she had rose-colored glasses on. And she does. But now that I understand the way the mind works, I'm like, you go, grandma. You look (laughs) through the world with those rose-colored glasses because she is so grateful for her life and she is so proud of her family and she is so full of love and she exudes everything and she will not sit there and gossip or dwell on the negativity and I'm like looking at her now going she is vibrant she is healthy she is beautiful she's so much to give she is loving her family and has from day one my grandfather who is now passed she just speaks so highly of him I've never heard her say anything negative about anyone and we used to kind of make fun of that and now looking at her going I'm putting my rose colored glasses on because that's how she sees the world and what a great world to live like that in so I would definitely say my influencers were my grandma my mother of course my mother was my person she was my everything she was my best friend and, you know, my aunts and my family, I, I don't have like um, someone famous or something, you know, some big grandiose person. I just was surrounded by kindness and love. And I would have to say that's my influence. I love that. Now, you know, as you were saying that right there, I have a picture of my daughter and her husband and my grandson it's staring right at me. And I, and I, that's exactly as they start their family and they start this new lineage of people that will last for generations, obviously. They have that opportunity. We all have it, no matter what our age is. But to see a young family starting out and say they can start that same lineage that your grandparents started of love. And, and did you, is your grandma by any chance going to listen to this podcast? I don't 
know. Well, she might. I mean, if if I send it to her, I don't know if she will or not. She might. I don't even know if she knows what a podcast is, but we'll find out. That's a radio show. That's how I explain yeah. it to anybody. Um, yeah. What is her? What is it? What, what do you call her? Grandma. Just grandma. Well, is her last name? What's her last name? Askins. It's Grandma Askins. Okay. Yep. Well, Grandma Askins, if you're listening out there, we want to welcome you to the Bamboo Lab podcast. And we want to thank you for helping to mold and sculpt this amazing lady we have on here today in Brooke. So <laughs> you keep going, Grandma. Yeah, yes. she's pretty great. Yeah. I love that, that she's grateful, proud of her family, and just so loving. I mean, I wrote those three things down. Very good qualities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next, she's qu- really great. Yeah, my mom is. What is my mom? She'll be eighty-eight this uh, August, and she's still the same thing. She's still going strong. She uh, she should be eighty-seven. No, she was born in eighteen thirty-five. I mean, she still works in the summer at a at a, a tourist uh, sh- a store my, store in my hometown, a little shop. And in the winter, oh. because they shut down in the winter, she volunteers at the Hope Chest. And today she called me, she texted me, honey, I'm going to a meeting for the Hope Chest employees today. And she just, she just donates her time there. And, you know, I think she checks people out and folds clothes and things like that just to stay busy. She walks every day. She's active on texting and FaceTiming all the time. And I just, I I just love to hear when our mothers and grandparents are so active and so healthy and energetic at that age. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're amazing. So, Brooke, I know during the, during the the quarantine and the COVID era that, Real estate was considered a non-essential. Um, so you you obviously things that was a tough time for you. Um, tough time for all of us, actually. Difficult, challenge, different challenges we were not expecting nor prepared for. What would you say, not necessarily relating to COVID, um, but what since that time frame, what has been your greatest learning? Yeah, you know, that was a really intense time. Um, you know, I had two kids, two teenagers at home who, you know, are very social. Um, you know, for me, I was like, this is great. I got my kids at home, but you know, after so long they're done. And you're right. My industry was considered to be a non-essential industry. So we got shut down for three months and I had a team that I felt very responsible for, of course. And I was also on the board of directors for my local board of realtors, which there's over 3000 realtors and there were 12 people on the board of directors. So we were in zoom meetings constantly and navigating and, and every time we turned around, something else was unfolding and there was something else we had to go and abide by and have a meeting for. So during that time, I, it was, it was a lot. I also took that time though, to realize once I realized how long we were going to be shut down for, this is a chance for me to pivot. Mm. And I had been having this, well, I wrote my book during that time. It had been brewing and it was something that I thought, gosh, if I don't do it now, will I do it? Because if I can't do it in some downtime, When will I ever? Because my life is very busy. And I was with my brokerage at the time that I had been with for 10 years. Excuse me. I had been with them for 10 years. And they were, it's a great brokerage. And during that time, you know, I've always hired professional coaches. I've always been a huge believer in, you know, getting knowledge from someone who's done it previously to me or just having someone to hold me accountable, someone to see my own greatness. And the particular brokerage that I was at, I kept on saying I had an awakening when I first started hiring coaches, like I'm going to do that one day. I want to make sure that my life is pouring into other people and my superpower will be seeing how great someone is and pulling that out of them because I knew coaches did that for me. And at this particular brokerage, there was one way to be able to be that. And that was through growing a great big team and essentially removing yourself from it. So you replace your position in the team so that you can then go and do the coaching or the speaking or the training or the big things that you want to do. So it was recruit, recruit, have a great big team and have, you know, sell millions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars. And then you, then you can earn the opportunity to go do that. 
So for years, that was the path I was on. And for years, that's what I was being told was the only way. And during the pandemic, I really went, hang on here. There, I am not enjoying building a great big team. I This is not my passion. I love selling real estate. I can sell real estate like the best of them. I, that's no problem. I love what I'm doing. But I thought, I'm really passionate about this coaching thing. And I know I have something to offer. I have a story. I have the struggles. I have the know-how. I really feel this brewing in me. And I don't believe that this is the only path. So my goal of becoming a coach never changed. My pathway did though, because the minute I set the intention of, I know there's a different path and I intend on finding it, the answers came to me. And I took a chance. I was offered a position to go over to this other brokerage um, and coach. And it was six agents, six agents, maybe seven at the time. Um, in one building that I said, I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sell real estate at this brokerage and they're going to hire me as this coach. And that's fabulous. And as I'm coaching, I'm also creating and implementing a coaching program. So it was chaotic. And I will tell you the first year that I was at that brokerage, I was in complete chaos um, because I was creating a coaching program and I don't do things just half-heartedly. So I really wanted to make sure that it was not just a coaching program, that it was going to be stellar. And I was also more in mourning because I had left a family up at my old brokerage. And so I was head down at this new brokerage creating coaching programs and not really getting into the tools, not really getting into like meeting the people and really engaging in the community and mourning what I had left. So it was a really difficult time, but I just kept on pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. And I have to tell you, I'm so glad I did. I knew that what I was doing was going to make an impact. And in the last two years that I've been at that brokerage, I like as as you had said in the bio in my bio, we went from having just six or seven brand new agents in one office to now rolling it out to our entire company, which is forty five offices in two states, and not only opening the coaching program to new agents, but now we offer it to agents at all levels, and we're doing manager leadership because we know that as we level up the agents and they're doing really well, well, we're only as strong as our leadership. So the leadership also is getting leveled up at an incredible pace. And we're just really focused on changing the industry. New agents that come into real estate, the odds are really against them. In the first two years that they get in, about 90% of them will not continue. And just in the two years that I've been there, now we are seeing that if you go through our training and you go through our coaching, that we have turned that around, the agents that are going through both and continuing on, they are, we have an 80% success rate. And not just that they're still licensed, like they have thriving businesses. So yeah, in the last three years, life has changed a lot. (laughs) Well, you know what? Excuse me. What I there's a quote in, on page thirty two of your book, and you said, "Do you want to be a victim or do you want to change? You cannot have both." And the Bamboo Pack members, at least the ones who've been around for a while, or will always remember a conversation I talk a lot about: is we have to choose our pain in life, and we life is nothing but pain. We can't run from it. We can't avoid it. You have two choices: you can choose that pain of what you mentioned here of change, the the uh, the pain of change and growth, and if you don't change that. Or, or don't choose that pain, you're going to get the pain of regret later on. And you can't have both. You know, you can't change and grow and still have regret. And you can't not change and grow and avoid regret. And that's, and I really love that because what you did during the COVID era is something that I think is so powerful. I call it the CIA method, Brooke. And it's, 
when my son and I did this, but the day we found out that the schools were closed, the gyms were closed, our favorite restaurants in East Grand Rapids were closed. And I wrote, put on our whiteboard in our home in, in EGR and I said, okay, I put CIA. I said, we're going to list all the things we can control during this period. We don't know if this is going to be one week or one year. What can we control? We could control our workout habits. We could control, you know, our eating. We could control how much reading we do, how much, you know, we could, there are so many things we could control. Then I said, okay, what do we, what can we influence? And I said, all we can do is influence other people by our, what we control. Then I wrote down all the things that we had to accept. There will be very little socializing. You won't, we won't be going to the gym. We won't be going to school. I won't be going to Big Bob's or, or uh, Big Bob's <laughs> or Olive's. Um, and it said, so we had a list and I said, we will not discuss the things we have to accept. Those are the C control, I influence, A accept. We will not discuss the things we have to accept. We will only discuss the things we can control. And what you did during that time is you did exactly that. I mean, you pivoted. I mean, you wrote your book, you started this coaching phenomenon that's, that's expanding. Now you took control and you can see the difference in people like you who did that who worked on the things they could control versus the people who sat home and all they did was watch, listen, get on social media or watch the news all day long. And they just, you know, the mental health of so many people because of that, um, trying to control the things they had to accept, you can see the difference in people. And I, I commend you for that. I think that's so powerful. Um, you know, there's another thing in the book here, and I, I want to give a shout out to two, two men in my life, actually three, and there's so many more, but these are the first three. There was a, in page uh, 30, 54 folks of her book, Uncaged, she has an action step, and first, there's, there's six steps, but the first one, it said, think of a person in your life who has accomplished a goal that you desire, and I want to shout out to three men that I wrote down right away. There are more, but these are the first three I wrote down uh, yesterday morning as I was reading this, Doug Linick, Dave Dick, and Frank Mossett. And I know you're all listening because you were all former guests in the Family Lab podcast. So I know you all listen each week. So I want to shout out. There are a lot more out there. I would think another one, Tony Mazzelli, uh, another amazing guy, friend of mine for 30 years, who was a guest on the podcast as well. Uh, there are many, many, many more. But uh, those are the, na the names that came up to me right away. So I think that's a, that was a really cool exercise. I haven't done all the exercises yet because, folks, the, the, I ordered the book a week ago or maybe longer. It was supposed to come last Thursday. Then it didn't end up coming until uh, Tuesday evening. I was actually sitting in my living room when it showed up. And so I started reading it Tuesday, Wednesday morning, and then finished it this morning. So I haven't been able to do all the exercises. And in fact, I've only done a couple of them. But I'm going to go back and do them because they are extremely powerful, the action steps. Yeah. Brooke, okay, I'm going to ask a question that I ask every guest on here, and you can refuse to answer or say no, pass, uh, but I'm going to ask it, and then you, you tell me if you want, to, you want to go that way. So the question is, I think I probably know the answer, but maybe not. What is the most difficult thing you've gone through in your life, and how did you scale that wall and overcome it? Yeah, um, hands down the most difficult thing I went through in my life was eight years ago, my mom was, uh, she passed suddenly from a car accident. And wow, was my world turned upside down. My whole family's world was turned upside down. So um, absolutely 100% I, that is the most difficult thing I've been through. Um, how did I overcome it? You know, I have to say, I don't know that I have. <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever not miss her, not grieve her, you know, but I also overcome it with a lot of gratitude. You know, just, I'm so grateful she was my mom. I'm so grateful for the core values that she instilled in my family. Um, I'm so grateful for my dad who has refused to not let us all stand together. And for my family that just continues to put family first. And um, yeah, she was, she was just the most incredible person. I, as I said, I was the oldest daughter Um and I, I would say the reason why I, you know, it was difficult for all of us. But when I say that she was my person, you know, I was a single mom and um, she really, along with my father, stepped in as a co-parent um, 
yes, I had like the, the worries and the struggles of a single parent, but I always knew I was never really going to hit rock bottom because they were there to help. She was at the same office as I was when I went into real estate. So she, she was a closer for a title company. So every day I went into work, I saw her. Um, so she was not someone that was just like my mom. She was a co-parent. She was a co-worker. She was somebody that I really depended on. And after her passing about, you know, you kind of go through a fog. Mine lasted about eight months. Um, I had to really just kind of pivot and think, okay, how do I turn this around? And I will say that I think is really when things started to change for me. She was my biggest cheerleader. And so as terribly as I would speak to myself, you're a single mom, you're not good enough to be able to do this, you know, of course, you know, you're going to fail and all the things as I'm being terrible to myself, she's the one saying to me, you can do this, go get it. You've got it. I know you're going to be able to land that listing. I, of course, they're going to want to hire you, right? She was always there to pick me up. And I found myself after I really was getting back into it thinking, what would my mom say to me? What would she say? And I would have conversations with myself in the car, really talking to her and like, all right, mom, I'm going on a listing appointment. Okay, mom, I'm really struggling with this right now. And I would speak out loud. And I, I had to become the voice that was saying, you can do this. You got this. No matter what, I believe in you. And I really had to become that person that she was for me. And when I started to believe that, that's really kind of when things started to turn around. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So there's these three categories of things that are going on. Things that you're aware of and can control. Things of you that you are aware of but cannot control. And things that you have no awareness of and cannot control. It's that third category that I'm going to be talking about. And the reason I'm going to be talking about it is because these things are wreaking havoc on your enterprise IT projects. I'm Dave Burrell, serial tech entrepreneur and CIO. I'm Dan Burrell, head of sales at a Silicon Valley software company. We're the father and son co-hosts of Bridging Business and IT. We invite you to listen to this great conversation and many others. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, Bridging Business and IT. I have to admit, uh, Brooke, I'm not a, I'm not a crier. Um, I'm not a crier when I'm sad, but I'm a, I cry like a baby when I'm happy. When my, mm. when my kids give me a, you know, say they love me or I'm, I'm that kind of crier. But as I was reading, I think it's chapter six in the book. Um, uh, or, 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 yeah, chapter six, when you discussed your mom yesterday morning, I almost texted you, but it was like five 30 in the morning. I'm like, no, I better not. I don't know. I don't, she's probably up working out by now. Uh, after reading, I was up. <laughs> I figured you were after reading the book. I thought, well, I probably could have texted her. It, I was actually sitting here with goosebumps and tears in my eyes. And I really, uh, there's a quote, there's two quotes in that chapter that I want to read. Uh, for the audience out there, because I really want you all to go out there and buy this book. And like, like I said, the first 10 people who reach out are going to get a copy on me and I'll order it the day you reach out. So, um, oh, I lost it here. So hold on. I had a book. It, she said it's real quick, but she's simple. She said uh, in the chapter six regarding her mother and the loss of her mother, her, who was her cheerleader, her best friend, her, her person. She said it was a moment that would change me forever and it was up to me to decide how. I mean, yeah. just think about that, all of us, all of you out there who are going through something right now, or if you're not, you're going to, everybody goes through three crises a year and one emergency, some not as big as what Brooke went through in uh, 2015, but um, we all go through difficult moments and times and ask yourself that question. You know, it's changing you. It's up to you to decide how, and I'm going to read a little longer quote because I really like this. I have this earmarked and highlighted. 
She said in this book, same chapter as chapter six, page 71, I now believe, and I think this is so profound book. I, I really like this. I now mm-hmm. believe that it is selfish to live in comfort and not chase your passion because so often I'm now I'm, it's me talking now. You know, I think so often we think that chasing our dreams and our passions and going for it in life are an act of some selfish behavior. You know, we're going to sacrifice our families. That's not the case. So going back, I'll start over. I now believe it is selfish to live in comfort and not chase your passion. Living without listening to the inner voice is what's selfish. You know what inner voice that tells you know the inner voice that tells you when something isn't right? Yep, that voice. That voice that says you were here for a reason, the one that says you have a purpose. Listen to the voice. I believe that we come here not just to exist, but to make a difference, whether in one life or in many in one life or in many lives. I believe that our creator made us each of us unique, all with an individual individual purpose, and I think that we have an earthly experience to evolve, learn those lessons, and make a difference. Yeah. Man, you could drop the mic right there and we could end right now on that. <laughs> uh, and I really believe that. You know, I, 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 I often talk, Brooke, about the three types of people I see in the world. And the first one are those visionaries. We'll call them airheads, visionaries, dreamers. Yeah. You know, and then you have the pipe dreamers who talk a big game but don't really ever pursue. And then you have, that's what you talk a lot about between learning and action or something. You have some good phrases in there about learning, excuse me, learning good material is one thing, but it actually, you know, taking taking it to the next level and applying it to another, another level. A lot of pipe dreamers. And then we have what I call apologists. And I think there are so many people, I call them apologists because about 25, uh, 29, seven years ago, I guess it was, I was in the mall with my girlfriend at the time and she was shopping and I was watching people. And I thought, man, these people, they avoid eye contact, their heads are down, they're walking like zombies. And they're like, and one of the first thing that came to me, it's like they're apologizing for taking up space on the earth, you know, yeah. and that's exactly what we're talking about here is, you know, you can, it's selfish to live that way. It's it, it, to be, it, it's, it's, it's selfless or at least a much, much higher level to live the life of a visionary, chase your passions, chase your dreams, whatever they are. And they don't have to be grandiose. Everybody might have a, for some people, a dream might be some massive, you know, change to the world. Another one might be just, Hey, I'm going to make my neighborhood or my community or my family a much healthier spot, a place to, to exist. I mean, whatever yeah. your passion or dream is, man, go for it. You only have, what, 80 years, 90 years on this planet? Man, make a yeah, difference. Yeah, consider make, lucky. Yeah. Uncage the lioness. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and I just so firmly believe that. And it's really something that I focus on really, really hard in my coaching program. Um, you know, that dream that you have that's burning inside you, that wasn't placed there by accident. And, you know, I just so firmly believe that, like, if you have that vision or you have that desire, you know, go for it. And the thing is, is it's like, even if you don't achieve it, so many people are afraid to fail and I'll, I'll, pivot here for a second say I didn't have a fear of failure I was good at failing I had a fear of success like whoa because we're going to default to what's familiar and I didn't know how to default to what would be my vision of success but with that said we do think it's selfish to go after what we want. And a lot of people do have a fear of failure and say, well, if I go for it, what happens if I don't make it? Well, first of all, what happens if you do? And second of all, and more importantly, who do you become when you're working towards it? That's where the real magic is. Not about hitting the top or going wherever you want to go, but who you become in the process. And uh, yeah, I really, really believe that we are here to evolve I hear, I believe that we are not here to be small. I think that if we play it small, we are doing a disservice to the world that needs our gifts. I couldn't agree more. And I think there's probably people on here right now, especially some of the newer members that have come on in the past three or four months thinking fear of success. What in the hell is that? So I want to refer, I want to have actually have some of the Bamboo Pack members who are asking that question to go back to the Bamboo Lab podcast uh, episodes number six, seven, and eight from February of twenty one, because we did a three a three episode series on what we call the monkey trap, and it's how the vast majority of us it's not fear of failure. We all have fear of failure. I mean, we ha- we fear rejection, embarrassment, losing what you have, which is the components of failure. We all have that, but it's not really debilitating for most people. It, it's the fear of success. I mean, you have fear of failure. What do you do? You become successful, and you're not then you're walking away from your fear. But if you fear success. 
and you're striving for success, man, that's, 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 that's a dichotomy your mind has to wrestle with. You're getting closer to the thing you fear. I'm afraid of bats. I'm deathly afraid of bats. I don't like heights either. So I'm not going to walk into a room full of bats or I'm not going to hover over the edge of a cliff anytime soon. I stay away from those things. So you have to dissect what, what does fear of success look like for you? And for so many, and I think Brooke, you and I, you mentioned this to me in, in our, uh, before we started recording today, that this imposter syndrome, as you were writing your book, that imposter syndrome came forward and you're like, well, who am I to write this book? That's just a prime example of fear of success. And I think yeah. so many of us face that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when, you know, you are somebody who was like me, where I, it was more important for me to just make everybody around me happy than it was for me to stand out and do something that was, you know, maybe a little bit different. So if I would hear anything of, you know, oh, now you're going to outgrow us or now you think you're too good or now, oh, what's going to happen here? Oh, I would allow that to stop me because if my success to me meant people aren't going to like me. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you always wanted to invest in real estate, but find you lack the time to commit to finding great deals, financing those deals, and even managing those deals to their highest potential? The Passive Real Estate Strategies podcast teaches investors how to take passive roles in partnerships with expert operators to multiply your wealth, secure high-level tax advantages, and build your passive portfolio. Check out our show now through the link in the show notes. Oh, I, I love that. I have a, a um, question for you. Um, as you're, you've, obviously, you've changed your direction. I like the term pivot you used a few times today. What now, as you're pivoting and p- have pivoted, probably always continuing to grow and pivot, what is a win for you, Brooke, in life? What's a victory? Um, you know, I'll say... I'll never forget when my son was young and he came home from school and he had this really great big grin on his face and he was really proud. And you got to remember, like when my kids were young, my parents were there to help me. But when I say I was poor and we were living in a two bedroom apartment, I mean, like we were poor, like I remember looking under my car seat for coins so I could get a couple hamburgers for my kids. I mean, and, and not always letting my parents or others know how poor I was too proud. Right. And, but still working full time and paying daycare and I mean, broke. Okay. And my son came home and I was stressed and I was, I felt broken and I I was just not fully me. And he came home and he was so proud and he said, mom, today my teacher asked us who our heroes were. And I told my class that my hero was you. And I went, whoa. Here I have this brilliant, amazing child who is capable of doing anything in the world. But I'm the person he's looking at. I'm the person who needs to show him that he can do anything. I can't just tell him that. I got to show him. So I would say... The fact that I was able to use my kids as a driver and know that they're watching, they're not just going to perform how I tell them that they can't. They're going to perform how I show them they can. And I would say that that awakening for me was probably a turning point and something I'm really proud of because it really shook me. And that's when I knew I needed to start making some changes. That is so powerful. I mean, I actually have goosebumps right now. I mean, I, I, and I believe you shared that in the in the in the book too, that story um, or something. I think it was it was that story. Um, but just to hear that, you know, it, and I, I'm gonna, I'm like kind of share with the bamboo pack here. When you read her book, and you will read her book, I'm hoping if you're into personal <laughs> growth and want to cure that inner voice or calm that inner voice and change that inner voice, 
in your head, which we all do. This book is for you. Um, there's a point in there, Brooke talks extensively about it primarily at the beginning of the book of, you know, at one point she went to college and then dropped out and then, then mm -hmm. she was waiting tables at a restaurant. She had, you know, two kids and they lived in this two bedroom apartment. And, you know, it was just like, like she said, looking in the car cushion, in the car seats for coins and change. And, and I mean, I, I just love these stories because mm -hmm. I want every Bamboo Pack member out there to think, and maybe you're not doing that. Maybe you are. Maybe you never had to. Maybe you might have to do that in the future, have to live like that. But we all have something that we're struggling with, something. We might, and many of you, tune in because you're looking for direction. You're looking for these guests to share some words of wisdom, which Brooke has shared multiple words of wisdom today, just maybe to get you off that, 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 that perk that you're sitting on right now. And think about that. And don't compare your life to Brooks, but parallel it next to it. And put yourself in, picture this young mother of two, waiting tables, you know, pinching pennies till they scream, wondering what she's going to do. Now, she did go back to school and got a degree in marketing. But at the time, she was, you know, not sure then what she was going to do. And now look at her. Look at her now. She's running an incredible coaching program. She's a, she's a John C. Maxwell, which John Maxwell is an amazing, amazing coach and right author. Um, uh -huh. certified coach, her, her coaching practice expanding. She's the mother of two amazing children. She's wrote up, written an amazing book called Uncage. You all have that inside of you. That was always inside of Brooke. Her true peak identity was always there. Her inner voice was trying to calm it down and keep it at bay because our comfort zone is an incredibly strong gravitational force. And it likes to keep us safe and, and home and, and comfortable at all times. You all have that. You, every one of you has, has that, that opportunity inside of you. And some of you are reaching it. But for those who are struggling right now, parallel your life to Brooke's and say, she did it. I can do it as well. So we're going to go back right now, Brooke. You and I are going to jump on a time machine. We're going to whiz back to that moment when you were waiting tables and you were at that stage in life where you were struggling and not know where, you know, where really, where's my next meal coming from? And trust me, I'm going to give a shout out to Laura and Mark out there who are avid followers of the podcast. And Laura will remember this well. When she and I were together 30 years ago, right when I started my, my coaching practice 27 years ago, we literally were digging in the cushions of the little mm -hmm. tiny shack we rented looking for a way to pay bills. I remember waking up in the middle of the night hearing the, a wrecker in the, in the yard towing away um, our car for non-payment. I remember, uh, I mean, just, you know, not having a phone and getting into my daughter's piggy bank just to buy some basic necessities. I mean, so yeah, I was there. I, I can, I, when you were talking in your book, I was so related so well to me. And mm. I really thank you for that. But we're going to go back in a time machine. You're going to talk to that, that young woman back then who was a young mother struggling if you could sit down i'll sit back and just observe you talking if you could sit down and talk to her what piece of advice would you give her what would you say to her yeah it's so funny i remember sitting in front of my closet i can picture it immediately like very vividly where i was and i was home and i had two young kids and my son was just in hysterics and i just remember going this is my life forever what have I done? I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I just wish I could wrap my arms around that young mom and just say, you're destined to do great things. This is temporary. Learn from this. You're going to be okay, you know, and be kind to yourself. We in tough moments beat ourselves up so terribly when really what we need is grace we just need to learn to love ourselves. We need to learn to give ourselves grace. We need to learn that our tough times don't have to stay that way forever. And if they do, we can choose otherwise. So I would definitely think that I would love, I mean, I kind of picture that young, scared, single mom who felt unlovable at the time. Um, I would just love to go wrap my arms around her and let her know it's going to be okay. And you're going to do really good things. And the biggest reward that you're going to have are the two kids right now that you're trying to raise and they're going to turn out beautiful and amazing. And you're going to be really proud of yourself. So, um, I think the biggest thing that I learned throughout that journey was 
this thing that I really coach heavily on and it's, it's a be, do, have. So many times, especially in hard times, we'll look and say, that's easy for them to say that. If I had that, I would behave that way too. And I had it backwards. If we desire something, we first have to be the person who has it. And what I mean by that is if we desire to have a beautiful relationship or a beautiful business, it's so important that instead of making ourselves a victim and saying, yeah, when I have that, I'll act that way. It's so important that we say, wait a minute. What does a person who has what I desire behave as? What books do they read? What podcasts do they listen to? How are they dressing? What time are they showing up? Because if I am being that person, then I can have what I desire. Meaning, you think about like a marriage. Let's say business isn't even the whole thing, right? So many people who are unhappy in a relationship will be like, yeah, well, if I had a happy relationship, I'd be nice to my husband too. Mm -hmm. Time out. You got to be nice to your spouse to have a happy relationship. So you got to be first to have. And same thing with business, same thing with everything that applies. And so I would go back to that young girl and say, stop victimizing yourself. Feel what you feel. Acknowledge it. Now get your big girl pants on and start being the person you desire. All right. I'm writing. So, so I, I just wrote, was it be to have or be do have? Be, be, yep. do, have. That's what I thought. If any of my coaching agents are listening to this, they're going to just fall over and be like, oh, here she goes again. Because <laughs> I say it all the time. B, who do, if, in order to have what you desire, you must first be. Be that person, do what that person does, and in order to have it. So a lot of times I'll coach agents, just speaking of realtors, and they say, you know, I want to have my my goal for my year one or year two is I'm I'm gonna I want to make six figures. It just kind of seems to be like the common thing of everybody says I want to make six figures. Okay, great. How does a six figure income earner show up? What time do they get to the office? How many calls do they make? What books are they reading? What conversations are they having? Are they working and setting appointments or are they going to happy hour at lunch and not returning? How do they, how do you need to be first in order to have the six figure income that you desire? We don't get to be the person after we have it. We always have that backwards. Love that. We have to be that first. I love that. I, uh, I'm going to just refer the audience back to the, uh, I think it was episode number three, January 31st on developing your true peak identity. That's a lot of what Brooke is talking about when it comes to be, but who, you know, first of all, you have to decide who do you want to be? Who, what, what's highest level version of yourself? Okay. So I'm going to stop for a minute, Brooke. I know we're, we're, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you're really, you're flexible, but you're, 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 you're busy. <laughs> and I, I want to speak directly to the bamboo pack member out there who is right now struggling and I want you to say what, just think about Brooke just told her younger version of herself. And I'm going to say it to you. You're destined for great things. This yeah. pain you're in is only temporary. You're going to make it, but you start love yourself. Give yourself some grace. You're going to be proud of yourself, but stop victimizing yourself. Be the person you want to be. So I'm talking to that bamboo pack member out there who is struggling right now. And for at whatever level, that is some solid pearls of wisdom that Brooke just threw at us. So make sure we capture that real quickly before we go continue on for the last two questions, if you, and I know you have, so I'm not, it's a silly statement, but please smash that like button. Please rate, review us and share this amazing episode with three people you love dearly. Be, do, have. I love that. I love it. Yeah. I mean, your clients and your coaching, your coaching clients are rolling their eyes and yeah, we hear that a lot. Well, I'm <laughs> glad that she said that on the, on the episode. Okay. So all the stuff going, what's next for you, Brooke? You know, I, I have just love, I love coaching. I love, um, pouring into others and there might be another book brewing at some point in the next five years, not 
today because I'm just developing great coaching programs, but um, I still sell real estate. I still love selling real estate. Real estate was an, is an incredible vehicle to help me make a bigger impact. Um, so real estate, coaching at a higher level, coaching more agents, more people, um, and just really making an effort to leave people better when they, after they've met me than before. My, I feel like my superpower is, um, seeing greatness in everybody Mm -hmm. and helping them see that. And, you know, I always say to my coaching agents, look, you can think my coaching program is good or great. You can think I'm good or great. None of that matters. If by the time we're done together, you don't see you as great. And I think that the more people I can impact and help them find their own greatness, we can just continue to, improve our community, our worlds, our industries, um, when everybody starts seeing their own greatness and uses their talents. I mean, what you just said there is something I I have a really strong, has a really strong hold on my heart is I I think our role as human beings, no matter what our title is, our position or our our profession, it's to increase the sense of self-worth of others. Yeah. And, I mean, but we, it's a, it's a, it's such a shortage in our, in our world of people. It's a, having, you know, good self, healthy self esteem. And if we can help people find that self esteem, that high sense of self and that true peak identity and help them live it, what a beautiful gift. Well, God bless you, man. That's, that's great stuff. I mean, thanks. Um, I think I liked your tagline every move has a story. Yeah. I <laughs> like that's really, it's pretty cool. Brooke, as we, I asked this last question, is there, um, is there any question that I didn't ask that you wish I would have, or is there any final message you'd like to leave with the bamboo pack? You know, I think that my final message is I want people to know that they are worthy of great things. Each and every person has value. And I know there are a lot of people out there who go, Oh my gosh, like I'm just pouring from an empty cup. I am just defeated. I am just not, you know, I I don't know how I could add on one more thing. And what I want to say is the, the number one thing that I have realized with the more business I do and the more people I pour into and raising children on my own and, you know, loving people around me is the best thing you can do for yourself is pour your own cup by spending time with you and getting to know you and just filling your, your mind with positivity. And I don't mean like foo-foo positivity. I mean like real good things that you can just fill your mind, fill your heart with. And the more that you can fill your cup and take time out for you and get to know yourself and your heart's desires, the more that you can pour into others. When we pour into others without our own cup being full, we can sometimes become resentful. And it can just be kind of daunting. But when you start the day with your cup overflowing because you have given yourself the gift of pouring your own cup, you start to see things different. You start to not feel depleted. And you can really be a gift to so many other people that way too. So I just want to say to you, be selfish. (laughs) Pour your own cup. You're better for everybody when you do. And you deserve it. Brooke, that's that's so powerful and beautiful. Have you read the book by Robin Sharma, The 5 a.m. Club? 5 a.m. Club? I don't know. I don't. Th- well, I'm looking at my library right now. Um, I read a lot, just so you know. I, I know. And uh, yeah, the book I, I'm, um, I do a Miracle Morning and Hal Elrod, had, um, I think that, yeah, wrote Miracle Morning. Yeah. And I read that like right when I first got into real estate and I'm telling you what a game changer, but the 5 a.m. club, I'm going to write that down. And, well, okay. And it's gonna be a, that'll be a gift for me, for me to you. So I'll order a copy. I, it's, <laughs> I've had a lot of clients read it. I've read it a few times. 
It's a fable written by Robin Sharma, who I think is one of the better gurus in our industry of coaching. And and, and uh, I'm going through a course with him right now, actually. And, and uh, it's, it's just it's an incredible book. It's changed so many people's lives. All right. I'm just going to read one last quote from the book because I think without even knowing it, Brooke really summed up the Bamboo Lab podcast on page 101, chapter 10. And the, the subtitle of the, of the title is Own Your Story, but the subtitle is Without Vulnerability, There Is No True Connection. But the quote that I like, the paragraph, she said, every single person on this earth is going through something. This is what I want you to get from this. We have to own our stories and be vul- vulnerable enough to connect with other people who are going through life changes. And that really summed up what we're trying to accomplish here on the Bamboo Lab podcast is sharing people's stories, their wisdom, their vulnerabilities, their challenges, the brick walls they have faced, how they how they've scaled the brick walls to help the Bamboo Pack members connect with those stories and then turn around and use some of those words of wisdom to really elevate themselves to that next level. So, Brooke, I can't thank you enough. This was it was as clean as a podcast can be as far as just yeah. everything went well. And I got to tell the Bamboo Pack members, uh, I was really surprised in reading the book. And I, sh- I shared this with Brooke before we started recording because she swears a few times in the book. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I love I it because I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, and, I, and I shared this with her before. I, I didn't reach out to Brooke because she was an author. I reached out because of the things I saw on social media that she posts. The, when I realized she wrote, wrote a book, I ordered it. And I thought, well, I'll read it out of respect for her because I'm going to be interviewing her. And as I was reading within the first chapter or two, I'm like, holy shit, am I glad I read this book. What an <laughs> amazing book. And it really is. It's, I, I can't tell it enough. I've already bought two copies, so I'll be giving 10 more away for anybody who reach for the first 10 who reach out. I know we'll have 10 people reach out, but hurry and uh, reach thanks. out. But uh, when you reading the book, and I'll share this with the Bamboo Pack because I shared it with Brooke earlier, it's so conversational. You, when you're listening, when you're reading it, you feel like she's sitting there telling you and sharing this with you. You don't feel like you're reading a textbook. or it, it, And through her her conversational story and her journey she takes you through, you just learn so much because she's sharing her journey and you're so many parallels and things you can relate to your life. And I mean, it's, it, it's a phenomenal book. It's, it's, I wrote it. I keep a, um, a journal of every book I write or I read and I give the author the title, the date I finished it in a you know, one through five star rating. And this was my fifth book of the month that I finished. And that was, you got a five star rating. In wow, my, in my thank journal. you. So I'm going to ask everybody to please click on the link below and order a copy of this book. Do yourself a favor. If you've got uh, young people in your life, a young daughter, young son, niece, nephew, grandkids, or a friend or a family member that uh, may be feeling a little caged in life and trapped, this is a great book, Uncaged by Brooke Crable. So, all right, thank Brooke, you. Any, uh, before we wrap up, I just want to take this this time to thank you for taking the time to be with us today. I know you're busy. You've got a lot of irons in the pot, but thank you so much for the book you've oh. written, for the difference you're making, and for being such an amazing guest on the Bamboo Lab podcast. Well, you are so welcome. And thank you to you as well for having the podcast and really sending out the message and and getting people to listen and, and really hopefully make positive changes. So you're doing great things as well. And I, it, it's an honor to be on here. Thank you. You are quite welcome. And it was a true honor to have you. If you've got a couple minutes after we're off air here, I'd like to just debrief with you if you have a couple. Yes. Okay, great. Well, Bamboo Pack, I know you loved this episode. I know the first person who will get a copy of this episode tonight is my mother, and she will listen to it while she's lying in bed. And I know oh. I'm going to get a text in the morning saying, honey, I really like that podcast. Because she tells me if she doesn't like it. I didn't like that one so much. <laughs> I know she's going to connect well with Brooke. And uh, so um, we'll see you all in a few days, everybody out there. Please, in the meantime, go out there and get out there. Sculpt your life, man. Get out there and really strive to be your best. Show love and respect to the others around you. And by all means, live intentionally. I appreciate each and every single one of you. <laughs>